Hi everyone, Stepan here. It's Saturday, so we are going to continue looking at games by Bobby Fischer. And we are going to continue covering the 1955 US Junior Championship, which was Fischer's first serious tournament. He was 12 years old. Before that, he'd only played the Amateur Championship. He scored 2.5 out of 6. Uh, in the US Juniors, played in Lincoln, Nebraska, he took 20th place. I'm not sure what the exact score uh, was, but he took he took 20th place, which isn't good for him, which goes on to show that he developed quite quickly and that he wasn't as good of a player when he was 12. In this game, he played the Noah Gambit, which if you've ever played the Italian or the Four Knights, it must have occurred in your games or it must have crossed your mind to play it because it seems like a logical move. And it has been played by great players. Shakri Mamediarov played it. However, the gambit is completely unsound. Even though the material is equal, and even though Black's King gets completely misplaced, White is lost according to the engines. Okay, let's let's get into the game. So White plays e4, Black plays e5, we have knight f3, knight c6, and Fisher plays knight c3, which is strange. He usually played the Royal Lopez. Okay, knight c3, uh, knight f6 uh, in this position, and here, this is the four knights, there are five main moves here. Bishop b5 is the main move, d4 is the second best, this is the four knights scotch, uh, the four knights Spanish is bishop uh, to b5, g3 is very popular, a3 is very popular, stopping b4, and bishop e2 is one of the main moves. But basically playing... Uh, a bishop e7 Italian against uh, with, with the white pieces. Fischer plays bishop c4, which is not a bad move. It just allows a problematic variation for white, which equalizes the game for black. Now, after this move, bishop c4, there's a common trick in the uh, in the Italian that well, black would simply play knight takes e4. And now if you play knight takes e4, black plays the move d5, gets the piece back, and the position is balanced. So bishop d3, pawn takes knight, bishop takes pawn, something like bishop d6 and castles. White could take on c6, ruin the pawn structure, but give up the bishop pair. But this is simply considered equal. So after bishop c4, black goes for knight takes e4. And now there are three options. The first one is, as we saw, knight takes e4, allowing d5, allowing an equal game. The second one is to simply castle. Whoa. Whoa. I got a survey from my browser, excuse me. So the, the, the screen got distorted. Okay, it should be okay now. The second one is to castle. And then after knight takes c3, you play d takes c3. And after bishop e7, because black should be castling, if black tries to somehow defend this pawn with, let's say, d6, then I think white could start an attack quickly and it could be too dangerous. Probably even bishop takes f7 could work. Okay, so after d takes c3, bishop e7, white regains the pawn with queen to d5. And the third option is what Bobby Fischer played, the Noah Gambit, the unsound Noah Gambit, which people probably had no idea uh, that it was unsound back in 1955. Bishop takes f7 check, boom. And the idea is, once you take my bishop, I'm going to take your knight, and then when you play d5, my bishop is not on c4, so you don't regain the piece by playing by me playing bishop d3 and you take on e4, I take bishop e4. You regain the piece in advance with king takes f7 and after knight takes e4, the material is equal, but your king is misplaced. Now, this position is considered to be lost for white according to the engines because black has the bishop pair in a very open position and because black can gain huge central control with the move d5 and he could advance with e4 or d4 later on. And as you probably know, if you've ever played the King's Gambit or any similar opening, uh, you simply have to accept the fact that you have weaknesses. In, in the case of the King's Gambit, your king is stuck in the center on f1, for example, and it runs around, but then eventually your lead in development and, and dynamic pressure wins the game. So it's, this, is, this case is similar. The Noah Gambit just doesn't work for white because black has too much activity central control and the bishop pair that's not easy to prove and you, the king safety issues could prove vital 
black wins against the king, king's gambit some, how, sometimes, white wins against the Noah gambit sometimes. But from this position, uh, 25 games have been played with d5, black won 21 games. So three games were a draw, white won one. So not a good score. And I'm talking about master and grandmaster games. Highest rated game, Mamedyarov, Wesley saw from 2019, Wesley saw won. Okay, so let's seek compensation with black. d5. Fisher, uh, now even though knight to c3 is supposed to be the best move according to the engines, and I've actually started this opening with white because I wanted something nice to have in blitz. Uh, even though knight c3 is better, it's sort of hard to prove why it's better, and I never really understood why I should be retreating my knight. So most people play knight e g5 check, which Bobby Fischer played as well. The king runs back to g8. And now the problem with this move, even though it looks nice, the, the knight didn't retreat, the knight advanced, seems to be adding pressure to e6, f7, h7, everything seems to be working out. It simply doesn't work. Because this knight is about to get chased away with h6, and it's going to end up on h3, which is a bad square. So, Fischer plays d4, which is okay, you have to challenge the center. If uh, e4 happens, then you can afford to play knight e5. Uh, the knight is sufficiently defended by the c1 bishop, and this would actually be very good for white now. If takes takes, this pawn is great, it could advance forward. Everything seems kind of better now. But after d4, h6 played, chasing the knight away, the knight has to retreat to h3. And now bishop g4 played, which is a good move. So his opponent, David Ames, uh, I'm not sure how strong he was. I think he was about 16 or 1650 USCF, so not a very strong opponent, but he, he dealt uh, with, with this gambit well. Okay, bishop g4, pinning the knight, of course, threatening e4. So d takes e5. Knight takes e5, now double attacking the knight, and Fischer plays knight f4. Now it's it's very hard to play this position. I mean, you can now see how much pressure black has because of his bishop pair, what the d5 pawn is doing to the white position. It's controlling a lot of important squares. There's this annoying pin on the f3 knight. The black king is misplaced, that's true, it's on g8, but as soon as it gets to h7, where it cannot be touched by any piece except the queen, because white has, remember, given up his light squared bishop on f7, the king is going to be perfectly safe. At the same time, white hasn't castled yet, his pieces are undeveloped, and there's the spin. And there's a problem on the e-file, so I would argue that white's king is less safe than black's king. Okay, c6 played, which is a good move, defending the pawn, knight f4 was attacking the pawn. Now h3, and in this position, uh, now this is a case of w which piece do we want to trade. In my opinion, the knight is much better than the bishop, uh, but I, I'm not sure. I would take bishop takes f3, and you're forced to take with the g-pawn, and the idea is... And that if I manage to trade these two bishops off, which I'm not sure I want to do, but if I do manage that, then I have ideas of knight g6, knight f4, and g5, and that would be strategically just winning, you just couldn't move. So I would be looking to get my knight into f4, trade off the bishops, solidify the knight, and then simply win, because these weaknesses are not going anywhere, and then the endgame would be winning for black. Uh, also, I could just continue with queen f6, Let's say he plays king f1 and now just rook e8 and just start putting pressure on, on all of these weaknesses. So this could work as well. I just think the knight is a stronger piece. In the game, uh, Mr. David Ames uh, took with the knight. Knight takes f3 check. So again, you have to have to take with the pawn. So pawn takes and bishop f5. The other problem with taking with the knight is that you, you, you lose a tempo because you, you have to move the bishop. Bishop e3 played, which is okay. Uh, and in this position, bishop b4 check, which I think bishop b4 check is a bad move, because white gets to play c3 for free, and the problem is that the queen wants to go to b3 or c2 anyway, so you're basically giving white a tempo. Instead of that, I think he could have just continued queen f6, putting pressure on b2, and in this position, let's say white ignores it, which he probably should, he should play something like rook g1 or, or something, or he could even play c3. Now, and, and for example, 
bishop to bishop to d6 attacking the knight continue with rook e8 this bishop is pinned so whenever you play bishop to, to d6 or bishop to c7 you're threatening to take the knight so this this would have been a lot of pressure i think this would have been better much better than bishop b4 in fact but bishop b4 played c3 and now bishop a5 i don't like bishop a5 because it's not attacking the knight I think bishop d6 is just a very sensible move. Let's say the knight moves, which it should be done. Let's say the knight doesn't move, and you play something like king f1, uh, king h7, let's say queen d2, and rook e8. And yeah, the bishop pair is just providing a lot of a lot of attacking chances. So I, I, I like black here. I like the bishop on d6 much better than on a5. Okay, but bishop a5. And now rook g1 played, which is a good move. And in this position, black just blundered his entire advantage away, which is very unfortunate. I think he played okay up to this point. His next move just allows Bobby Fischer to equalize easily. Uh, so in this position, he played queen e8. And if you want, pause the video and find what's wrong with queen e8. Okay, so queen e8 is a tactical blunder. And Fischer can just play knight takes d5. And the refutation to taking the knight, of course, is queen takes d5 check and, and I pick up your bishop. And I'm a, I'm two pawns up and simply winning. Uh, you don't have the bishop pair anymore and you lost two pawns. So if the knight is taken, you lose immediately. So David Ames played queen f7, which is better. Knight f4. Now, of course, the knight was attacked because queen takes d5 would be met with queen takes d5. Rook e8 played. Queen b3 played, which is a good move, uh, forcing black to make a decision now. Of course, I'm taking b7, I'm also threatening to trade the queens off, and with me being a pawn up, that's not a bad thing, considering that I was lost after my Noah Gambit idea. Black now plays a tricky move, bishop c7. Uh, in this position, of course, black is threatening to play bishop takes f4, or bishop takes knight, and simply win a piece, win the game. So something has to be done about that. So what you can do is either play an intermezzo move, which Fischer played, queen takes f7, or you can play a very good move, which he unfortunately didn't play, which would have kept the pressure in the position, and that's knight h5. Now after knight h5, if black is the one to trade the queens, then you take with the a pawn, the a7 pawn is attacked, it's not easy to defend. The queen, of course, cannot take the knight because it's pinned to the king. If you play, uh, let's say you play g6, that would be a dreadful blunder, because again, knight f6 check wins the rook, the queen cannot move, wins the exchange, excuse me. After knight h5, if you play something like rook e7, then I simply take on, on g7, that was my second threat. So knight h5 is really hard to meet. In fact, after queen b3, I take on g7 first, you move the king and then I take, or, excuse me, I continue with, with bishop c5. Uh, no, no, okay. Yeah, sorry, the bishop is pinned. So I, I I could continue with bishop to c5 later on if I manage to move my king away. So this would be crushing. So after knight h5, the only move, in fact, that defends everything is bishop to e5. Defending g7 and also stopping knight to f6. Okay, so after this, uh, white should take the queen. King takes... And now simply continue with h4, you don't want to lose your h3 pawn. But what happened in the game was that after bishop c7, Fischer took the queen immediately, and after king takes, he now played knight h5, which now doesn't work because g6, and you don't have knight f6 check anymore, because the king is on f7. So after knight g3, David Ames simply picked up the h3 pawn, and now he lost his extra pawn, it should be equal. White castles, rook d8... Rook takes, bishop takes, basically an invitation to a draw with rook d8, which Fischer accepted. Uh, bishop g2, another pawn trade, and in this position they agreed to a draw, which is maybe if 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 black is ambitious, he should play for the win. He has the bishop pair, should be slightly, slightly, slightly better, because there are pawns on both sides of the board. However, black probably will have his g6 pawn blockaded, on g5, on a dark square, so I, I'm not sure an engine could win this. 
probably a grandmaster would win this against an amateur nine out of ten times because it's easier to play with the bishops but objectively should be a draw still for 16 1700 players they should keep playing fisher was 1800 at the time so he's white why why not play this on fisher a bit later whoa okay i have hornets coming into my room all the time this is the second time i have to open the door wait so Okay, I don't, there's probably a nest somewhere. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, uh, round four of the of the 1955 US Juniors. We are going to continue with round seven. Wow! What the hell is going on? I hate killing them, but I'm slightly afraid of them. Okay, we're going to continue with round seven next Saturday because. I don't have fi rounds five and six, although somebody posted a link where I could be able to find them uh, in the comments of the last Fisher video, so I'm going to try to find them and try to get us rounds five and six. Thank you for watching, let me know what you think about the game, and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.